Okay, so if we can start by, um, if I can ask you, what what do you think are the key uh, trends anticipated in both AI and the hyper, sorry hyperscale data center market over the next few years? I don't know, five years, say. Yeah, so we've seen early adopters already taking the lead in integrating AI into their operations, and they're leveraging modern ecosystems to boost their productivity and efficiency. So within this evolving landscape and having closely monitored the impact of these transformative technologies, we're confident uh, in making some key predictions. So in terms of AI development and investment, we anticipate continued growth in both the scale and capabilities of AI models. It's a trend that's been ongoing for the past decade with frontier models and training infrastructure doubling in size roughly every six months. However, scaling up brings challenges, particularly in accessing enough training data and compute power. AI accelerators are also evolving rapidly with the possibility of new designs that break traditional chip boundaries and include multiple processor chips, high bandwidth memory and input output chips within unified packages. Memory capacities on accelerators are expected to expand as well as users optimize resource balance between CPU, GPU, and networking capabilities. And then additionally, cloud service providers are expected to offer more sophisticated AI and machine learning services, while new entrants in the space will compete. And then in terms of networking and bandwidth, Technologies like remote direct memory access, ultra ethernet, and increasing surges rates will be crucial for supporting AI workloads in the future. We're also anticipating the adoption of 800G and beyond networking standards in the near future, with potential for 1.6 terabit to become the top bandwidth standard down the line. Onboard optics are showing promise as a mainstream hyperscale technology, particularly for applications like co-packaged optics. And then semiconductor chip technology is also advancing steadily with feature sizes projected to shrink towards one nanometer over the next decade, while chip stacking becomes more prevalent. Chiplet technologies like chip on wafer on substrate are expected to enable new integrated modules with multiple processor chips. AI cluster scale and density are set to change dramatically with today's largest clusters of around 16,000 GPUs potentially increasing tenfold within the next two years. However, managing all of the power demands and heat generation within a limited footprint will present significant challenges. And then lastly, as rack power densities increase, advanced cooling techniques will be required to support the future densities upwards of 100 kilowatts per rack. Okay, and just following up, I think, on something you referenced there about the AI cluster sizes, but just be good to understand perhaps in a bit more detail how you think AI cluster sizes and the densities which you referred to, and maybe the overall scale of deployment, scales of deployment, how they, how do you think they will change, you know, in the corresponding, again, in the next few years, five years or so? Yeah, so presently, the most substantial AI clusters house approximately 16,000 GPU accelerators. However, within the next one to two years, these clusters are projected to grow tenfold. As AI models become increasingly large and intricate, we may soon witness the emergence of clusters with hundreds of thousands of nodes. This expansion in cluster size will result in unprecedented density increases within the confines of data center facilities. And to accommodate this immense scaling while ensuring adequate power, cooling, and connectivity to each node, GPU and other accelerator nodes will need to be very densely packed. Rack power densities might soar towards 100 kilowatts per rack, surpassing the current limits by over five times. 
Thus, that requires innovative cooling solutions to manage this substantial heat load. And at these elevated densities, conventional air cooling methods will prove inadequate. Instead, liquid cooling methods such as rear door heat exchanger or full immersion are likely to become indispensable. Transitioning away from air cooling presents a significant challenge, however, requiring the redesign of racks, data halls, and overall facility infrastructure. And then space within data centers will become increasingly scarce and valuable. Of course, cabling infrastructure will also face some considerable challenges with port counts skyrocketing from tens of thousands to over a million ports per cluster. So innovations in fiber routing, termination, and high density connectors will be imperative to accommodate these scales. So as clusters potentially encompass hundreds of thousands of nodes interconnected in a fully meshed fabric, maintaining alignment and minimizing loss at such high densities will be crucial. So overall, supporting AI clusters at these anticipated scales will precipitate a paradigm shift across the industry. Collaboration between hyperscalers, cloud providers, and network vendors, vendors will be essential to develop integrated solutions addressing the challenges of power, cooling space, and connectivity. Because we're packing so much more processing power into a confined area. So new approaches that reimagine the conventional data center design will be important in order to unlock the full potential of future AI technologies. And, and following up on that, I'd be interesting to know what you think, what innovations are you anticipating in terms of fiber optic cabling technologies um, you know, to meet the connectivity demands of these larger AI clusters, which you, you've described, and you know the implications of all the uh, you know everything that goes with those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so consider this: uh, current 4K clusters boasting tens of thousands of nodes already have over 50,000 network ports, and that really dwarfs the mere 5,000 ports that are required in a traditional data center of similar size. And when we look ahead, future clusters housing hundreds of thousands of nodes may require port counts reaching into the millions. But let's be real, our current cabling solutions won't cut it at these scales. We'll need higher fiber count connectors, like those ultra density multi fiber array style designs that we've seen starting to emerge. Take the multi fiber, very small form factor connector, for instance. It's promising stuff. It combines a smaller ferrule with 12, 16, 24, or 32 fibers in the same footprint of traditional duplex connectors. And as transceivers catch up to these interfaces, multi-fiber, very small form factor connectors could very well become the new standard, powering speeds of 1.6 terabits and beyond. But then it's not just about the connector. We also need to shrink the fiber diameters to pack more into cables. Recent breakthroughs have already reduced diameters from 250 micron to 200 micron. And we have line of sight to further reductions to 160 micron and 80 micron. Plus, there's multi-core fiber technology, which is embedding multiple independent fiber cores within a single strand. And that promises linear increases in bandwidth capacity per fiber. But of course, managing all of this density is no small feat. We need high density fiber routing, termination, and patching solutions. Think rack architectures designed for front to back cabling and ultra high density patch panels. Inside of the racks, innovations in cable management and bend radius control will be imperative to mitigate signal loss or damage. And then to top it off, achieving seamless connectivity will require a fully integrated appro approach, possibly tapping into embedded optics and chiplet assembly techniques. Imagine this, co-package optical engines with switching and processor chiplets. 
enabling onboard optics with direct attached cables. But to make all of this work, we'll need standards for chiplet and module interfaces to ensure open best of breed solutions. So by anticipating and helping to drive these fiber cabling technologies, hyperscalers and network vendors will lead the charge, clearing the path for AI clusters to reach unparalleled scales while also maintaining the connectivity densities and performance that's essential for un unlocking that full potential of future AI capabilities. Um, and maybe just in, in summarizing, it'd be good to understand, bearing in mind, I mean, given the unprecedented challenges of uh, scaling AI to, I think the exascale is is where we're, we're sort of rapidly heading and beyond, no doubt. Um, how do you think the industry needs to evolve to overcome those, uh, you know, those challenges, those barriers? Yeah, so if we expect to scale our cluster sizes to 100,000 nodes, that will require unparalleled collaboration across the ecosystem, particularly in the realm of fiber optic technology. If we wish to address the density and connectivity posed by over 1.5 million network ports and will we'll stretch far beyond the capabilities of our current approaches and methods. So for hyperscalers, forging close partnerships with network vendors is imperative. Together, we must rigor rigorously test the emerging fiber solutions. And in this collaborative effort, uh, focusing on testing and validating new technologies at scale, that is crucial for mitigating the risks associated with innovations before you implement it into this exascale ecosystem. So it's only through such open partnerships and that steadfast dedication to overcome this fiber challenge that the industry can hope to develop the solutions that align with this anticipated growth of AI in the years ahead. Well, as ever, it's been great to chat to you and some, some brilliant insights as to where we're headed, although it sounds a bit scary just because it's you know the, the scale we're talking about. But at least for now, I'm sure we will have a, a, another conversation, see how, how it's developing. But I say at least for now, thank you very much for your time, Manny. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me.